on Friday, we got the 76th live letter for Final Fantasy XIV. And in it, it detailed for us patch 6.4 The Dark Throne. It will be releasing in late May of this year. And I have watched the live letter. I have reviewed the live letter. I have looked at a lot of stuff about the live letter. Because I, I don't speak Japanese. So, you know, I kind of had to, like, wait for people to translate it or for, or for like, you know. But, but that's besides the point. We got the live letter. We got shit to talk about. I told you two weeks ago to buckle the fuck up. And I hope you're buckled the fuck up. Because we're going to be talking about... Everything that was unveiled in patch 6.4. And I think we will start with... A Reddit post. Oh no. A Reddit post. No, it's a good Reddit post. Because this homie right here. Mr. S'more of Babylon. Shout out. Shout out. Everybody give a shout out to S'more of Babylon. This man made a summary of the live letter. And we're going to be looking at it today. Of all, this is everything that was announced. So, nobody can fucking sit here and tell me that I missed something. Because we're not missing anything. So, as expected, coming in uh, patch 6.4, the Dark Throne, we got new MSQ and we got a new dungeon. What is that dungeon? This dungeon is called the Aether Font. What is the Aether Font? Well, I mean, I mean, we don't really know, like, at all. However, on the official FF Twitter, they gave us a picture. They gave us a picture of what the Aether Font could be. This is it right here. As you can see here, that well, there's a couple more pictures, but but this was the main picture. So as you can see here, there are polar bears. There's ice. There's like this weird thing over there. This big stream of ether, probably. This looks like to me the northern reaches, right? It is it is up near Charlan, especially because look, that's fucking Charlan architecture. Anybody who says it ain't is a psychopath. That's and it made me think, right? Because looking at this image, it's like okay. Obviously, it's going to be up towards Charlan. What can we surmise from this, right? If it's got the Charlan buildings, if it's got polar bears, you know that'll be a mount or something. And if it's got Aether and it's called the Aether font, well, what does it all mean? Well, I looked up. I, I was like, Aether font. Well, what the fuck does font mean, right? What is... What is, what is font define as? So I looked up font. Here we go. This is, as you can see right here. Dictionary. Font. It's a noun. Alright. It is. Here's, here's some of its uh, things. It is a receptacle in a church for the water used in baptism. I don't think it's really that, but I mean, who knows? You know, a reservoir for oil and an oil lamp. I don't, I don't think this is oil in an oil lamp. However, that could be like symbolic in its own meaning. But then we got this last one. A source of a desirable quality or commodity. A font. What is a font? It is a spring or a fountain. So, what is this? What does this all mean? Well, let's put... Let's, let's do some, you know, big braining right here. So we got, it's called Aether Font, right? If font means spring or fountain, that means that it is a spring or fountain of Aether. Like this. Now, in the Endwalker, one of the things that we realized is that in order to get to Meteon, in the in the out in, in the outer reaches of the universe, we needed to use a spaceship, and that spaceship was uh, piloted. Well, it was fueled by Aether, 
and we used the ether pulled from the mother crystal to uh, if I remember correctly, we used the Aether from the Mother Crystal to summon the Primals, and then the Primals powered the ship. I could be doing that backwards, but yes, we needed a lot of Aether to power up the Ragnarok, right? Well, if we go back to the Reddit post, we're going to be getting a new trial. This trial is the Void Cast Deus. And there is no fucking secret on who this trial is going to be about. Because if I pull up the official post, the official tweet from, from Final Fantasy XIV uh, Twitter, we see here the picture, the time has come, a new trial, the void cast deus awaits. That is Golbez. So. So. More like than not, right? This trial is gonna we're we're gonna fight Golbez. Spoilers, I know. Crazy, crazy thought. Now, Golbez, behind him is the 13th. Uh, here is is I'm going to assume it's the moon of the 13th, right? Which is a reflection of our moon. So so if my idea was that he was gonna fucking slingshot the moon to the source and we're going to have to go up there and fight him that way. And, and I mean, that's still possible, but the thing is, is that like, if we're going to him, well, how the fuck do we get here? You know, like, sure. Like we sure. Like we could use like a void portal and like walk to the, to the surface and then find a way up, which is possible. Or, or we could get the fucking Ragnarok that's collecting dust in Labyrinthos power that bitch up, and fly ourselves to the 13th. How do we do that? Well, obviously we're going to need power. This is going back to what I was saying. We're going to need Aether. We don't have the Mother Crystal no more to get that Aether. We need something else. And you know, being the Charlans, right? They were building the Ragnarok well fucking before they knew anything about Hydaelyn and the Mother Crystal or any of that shit. So, like, it's very possible that the Aether font might have been their place where they're basically getting a bunch of, like, fuel or some shit for the Ragnarok. You know what I mean? I feel like this is what the Aether font is. It is literally... This, this patch is gonna be about getting gas... At its, at its most basic form. So we could go beat some knight's ass on an alternate moon. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. You know, like, I could be very fucking wrong. But still, like, I guess, like, we could also, like, use the Aether font for, like, building a portal or something. But either way... We are going here for the sole purpose of getting to here. You feel me? Anyways. We're, we are also getting more pandemonium. It is Anabasios, which I don't I don't know if this translates to anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna check right now. What is what does Anabasios translate to in, in a language? Do we know? No. No, it doesn't. Not that I can see. However, it is as I said that we were getting a pandemonium. And it's only pandemonium. No no, uh, 12 raids. So we are getting a patch 6.5. Which goes back to the idea that I was having of like, if Golbez is going to be the trial, then what are we going to do in 6.5? And, and another thing is, why are they so open? To showing us Golbez as as the trial. Because here's the thing, right? I do not think it, it is said. I could be wrong. All, all this says is a new trial. The void cast deus awaits. And it shows a picture. It doesn't fucking mean... We are going to fight him. Because they don't say that. I still think it's going to be Vitra's sister. 
and we're gonna fight on the void cast dais Vitra's sister which means Golbez will be 6.5 I and I think this is a fake out because no before they have not shown the trials at all but now all of a sudden they are it makes you think don't it I mean it makes me think that shit sus I don't know about that anyways going back to what I was saying we're getting pandemonium right so we're getting a so you know, 6.5 will be coming eventually, soon, down the line. Probably this fall. Whatever. Anyways, we're getting more Tataru Taru stuff. And this will be about Gaius and Whirlit. So if you have not done the Sorrows of Whirlit, you should. That is a really good quest line. I know a lot of people don't like it for some reason. Well, well then those people are weird. Because Sorrows of Whirlit was really sad. You should go do it if you haven't. Uh, new Unreal Trial, Containment Bay, Z1T9, which is Zervan. I don't remember fighting this guy, but I think he is Warring Triad, which, hey, Warring Triad was, was another reference to Mericidia, and one of my thoughts was that Mericidia could be something to do with either the next expansion, considering that we are dealing with the 13th and... Maricidia lore is fucking like insane when it comes to like void scent and stuff like that or you know the expansion afterwards yeah that's warring triad yeah that's what I thought uh, new in new high end crafted combat gear new tombstone gear of course so we're getting new tombstones as well yeah new tombstones will be introduced and they are the tombstones of comedy no that's actually we are we are we are in a clown world, gamers. We are getting comedy ass tombstones. And they're like piss yellow, it's crazy. New ocean fishing around Kugane and the Ruby Sea. I think that's nice. Uh maximum number of gear sets is gonna be increased again. That's that's really good. A lot of job adjustments. Alright, look, I'm gonna be honest. So you remember my video I did on Paladin? Where I was like, I really like these changes. I do. However, they can be better. Buff Paladin again. I If Goring Blade needs to be like a fucking ability that like does like 6,000 fucking potency. Alright? We need big dick damage. If you want Paladin to be like, if you don't want them to have dots. Okay? Give us like so much potency all the other tanks are useless. Anyways. Job icons will now be displayed in, in a chat log or above player nameplates. So now you'll never be confused when you look at someone and they're like, Bro, this motherfucker looks like a dark knight and they're like a ninja. I've done that before. Transaction fee for items sold on the market board can now be incorporated into the item's total price. I don't know what that... Transaction fee for items sold can now be incorporated into the item's total price. Oh, I so I see. So when you buy something on the market, if it's up for 2000 and the market price then would shoot it up to 2500 it, it would show you 2500 then, I think. That's interesting. That's nice. This is a big change, this next one. Glasses and wing fashion accessories will now display when you are in combat in the overworld. So, if you want to have a hat, and you want to have some glasses, congratulations. You did it. You can do it now. Now, it says in the overworld, it doesn't mean in dungeons and stuff yet, which, I mean, I mean, look. If you're going to duke it out with a boss, take your glasses off or they're going to get broken. That's just me. Items stored in a variety of locations can now be selected when casting glamours in an in room. Really? I don't I don't I don't know what this means, I'm gonna be honest with you. Because I don't I have like four glamour plates and the rest are like cool outfits that I've shoved in my armoire. Or glamour dresser or whatever it is. And then there's now now there's fairy glamours for scholars and stuff like that. That's nice. And then so this is all in patch 6.4, 4.1, which, which is in late May, they have said. And then now we get on to patch 6.45. Alright, this one. 
a new variant dungeon, Mount Rockon. Which is... Uh, I That is in the Far East. I'm pretty sure. Let me pull up the picture I had of it. There it is. So here is the one here is one of the pictures that they had for it. Mount Rock on as you can see here. It looks uh it looks pretty alright. It it's like a it's a variant dungeon, but instead of being in like a cave or something, it looks like you're gonna either be exploring like an abandoned village or some sort of like a training site in a big ass fucking like bamboo forest, probably somewhere out in Yangsha, right? I don't really know what this is going to entail, however, I assume that, like the last dungeon, we're going to be probably, like, accompanied by maybe, like, Gosetsu or someone else. Maybe Gosetsu is going to go on a pilgrimage and he, like, needs our help or something, you know. And so we're going to go with him to Mount Rock on, on, a, on, on some great, grand journey or something, you know. I think that'd be neat. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Then... Blue Mage. Blue Mage is getting an update. Level cap will be raised to 80. They have not forgotten about you. There's new spells. New blue exclusive gear that will be added. And new enemies added to the Masked Carnival. Now, I have not done Blue Mage, so I don't know what it entails. However, I do know that the whole idea of Blue Mage is fucking ridiculous. And it's just goofy ass shit, but it's fun. I will probably end up leveling Blue Mage before this patch comes out. Because I really want to like... When this when this gets increased and stuff, I want to do it. And maybe I'll make a video on Blue Mage because, you know... They just seem so fun to me. <laughs> uh, obviously, like I said, because I am <clears throat> really good at uh, uh, guessing... Uh, we're getting more Hildebrand. And... With more Hildebrand, more Manderville Relic Weapons, and we're getting more Splendorous Tool stuff. Now, Manderville Relic Weapons. I don't think they've said anything on what the things entail for it. However, I am going to assume that this, this step will probably be a lot more in-depth than gathering 1,500 tombstones and buying a couple rocks. <laughs> Maybe maybe this one will be like, okay, go run like a bunch of dungeons or something and get some like some drop or, or whatever, you know. PvP, Crystalline Conflict Season 6 will begin after 6.38 maintenance ends on April 4th. That That's already happened. Uh, season 7 be, will begin with 6.4. So, we are between seasons right now. The PvP Series 4 will begin at the launch of 6.4. So, if you if your ass has not gotten the False Monarchy set from, from Series 3, you got until, like, late May to do it. Okay? So, get that shit done. It's a good set. I really like it. You should do it. Go get it. There's going to be adjustments to front lines. New UI element displaying match time and score. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, you kind of need that because the current UI is kind of like, it's not hard to read. Like, it's easy to understand, but it's so like, like, you kind of forget it's there, if that makes sense. And so like, you can't really, like, you can't keep track of it very well, you know? Rules for Field of Glory will be adjusted and Borderlands Ruin Secure will be temporarily unavailable. Borderland Ruin. I think this is the one that I don't like. <laughs> I don't like Borderlands Ruins. I love Borderlands as a game. I don't like the Borderland Ruins. Fuck that place. Looks like shit. Uh, Stormblood MSQ dungeons are getting added to the duty support system. So that's Siren Song Sea, Bardem's Metal, Doma's Castle, Castrum of Banya, and Alamigo. Really, you don't go through uh the Ruby? I guess you don't, huh? This will leave only the 4.x MSQ dungeons without duty support, which will then be added in 6.5. There's confirmation that we're getting a 6.5, just in case. And Hien and Gosetsu will probably be in, you know, in the pool if we actually look at the fucking duty support picture that I have here. You you can see for yourself. We rock in three samurais and a healer, bro. We don't need no tank. Fuck them. 
Uh, although, to be fair, I, I think Gosetsu would probably end up taking up the role of a tank in any of these if you are not a tank. I feel like out of anybody who can be a tank, this motherfucker could probably be a tank. Or a healer. Considering that, you know, later down the line he, he, he basically becomes a healer. But, you know, that's, that's, besides the, that's besides the point. Anyways. Anyways, going back to this. Island Sanctuaries are getting another update. I said they would, and they are. More ranks. And visions. So, like, more stuff to upgrade and more stuff to do. Uh, there's going to be a new gathering area. I guess they're going to expand it. New construction plots at the hideaway. So, we are expanding the hideaway. So, like, you know those islands? Like, if you've done it, there's, like, islands behind the... Uh, like mountain area where like you cross through the cave onto the main island i'm pretty sure like we're gonna get plots probably on those things there's new rewards new materials and then something that's crazy that paves the way for this to actually probably be something close to actual player housing you can place outdoor housing items at the hideaway you know for a fucking fact all right look here's here's the fucking deal if you are an Omni Crafter, this is your time to shine. You better start fucking building and crafting a bunch of outdoor items because the prices on those things are going to fucking skyrocket. Believe you me, bro. You better get on that grind because you're going to be making hella money in 6.45. Because you fucking know people are going to be buying up tons and tons of it. Also, what was just added, which was a fucking goddamn pain in the ass, and I hated it, and I never ever want, want the servers to go down like this again. There was full 24-hour maintenance to, you know, do some, you know, ugh, maintenance and make things better. Which was, it was kind of, it, it was a, it was a slog and I hated it. Uh, pre-orders for FanFest merchandise regions will begin. And, and, so, we gotta pay attention to the live letter, or not the live letter, the FanFest. Because, they will be showing off the 7.0 graphics updates in July at the FanFest. I'm so, I'm fucking so ready. Also, gameplay footage, uh, 6.4 trailer, and additional information will come in part two of the live letter. We don't know when part two of the live letter is, I don't think. However, it's probably going to be sometime before May, probably around the middle of April. Right? I would assume so. That being said, I want to know what the fucking graphics update is going to look like. Because we saw that one preview, didn't we? Like... Graphic update. Like, did we see that one fucking picture or whatever or whatever it was? Yeah, this here. It was stuff like this, I'm pretty sure. It looked fucking crazy. Like, like, it's not, it's not like too hard, but it's the shadows. They are increasing the fidelity and they're increasing the way the shadows look. And look. I am always an advocate for shaders and shadows and making the lighting look as nice as possible because your game can look like dog shit. However, if the lighting is good, it's going to be the prettiest thing you've ever seen. Valheim proves this. Okay? Valheim. Let, let me show you a picture of Valheim. This game's ugly as hell. This game looks like it belongs in a fucking goddamn PS1 era. This game looks like shit. Look at this. Now, I love this game, by the way. It's a really good game. However, you then get like a nice ass fucking like this looks like ass. But then you go and you look at something like this and you see those shadows and you're like, Fuck, this game's pretty. You see what I mean? 100 fucking percent that this this graphical update, all they gotta really do is like adjust some of the textures and then just 
fucking bass boost the shadows and the shadings and the shaders and the fidelity of them and the lighting and this game will look fucking beautiful gorgeous this game already looks really good but it, it, it would look even better you know what i mean 